Free run episode 15, Smells Like Trouble. More wagon travel. For an up all night thinking about perversion. A mere four years. That's a little bit more surprising. Huh. More women. A pet. If this were a real, like, action RPG, one of their party members would be a demon. He's the good one. I like how the chests actually are a real thing in this world. A pet. Man, should have seen that coming. I didn't say women. <laughs> that was my first first answer. Do they? Uh, yeah, I don't really. I don't think that's. All right, we need to define our terms on this. I think I know what he means. He's not talking so much about an age, but like a type. Was for in sleeping foreshadowing. Her <laughs> first instinct is just to leave. I don't like this. Let's bounce. Let's get the hell out of here. Oh, is that for you making a joke? Damn. In the dark hearts of man. So there's different kinds of magic. Interesting. Different sources. Yeah, this is really important lore that we're just dropping here in episode 15. These passive stats. It's exactly what the passive stat would be called, too. This class system just got even more important. Interesting that Freerun called it boring because she can't understand it or isn't very good at it. One of the most common topics that I feel comes up for me in shows, I guess because it's really prevalent in everyday life as well, is like the whole genius question, talent question. I think it's pretty clear that there's this feedback loop where if you're naturally gifted, it gives you a head start and you have that positive feedback loop where you enjoy doing something. So not only are you naturally gifted, but you're putting in more work in it and it kind of spirals upwards from there. One lesser thought about thing that's kind of cool is that there's perhaps a hack for this or a way to bootstrap it, which is like just to force yourself to get good at something beyond a certain level, at which point it will become fun and you'll get that feedback loop. This is also a point of IQ. Things only start to become really fun in that sort of real engagement play way when you've mastered the basics so that you're not devoting all your resources to thinking about the basics. I've had the experience where even jobs that I, I hated at first became fun once I became decent at those jobs, where I started to feel really competent. It feels good to be good at stuff, but you don't have to wait for natural gifts necessarily. <laughs> Why do I feel like Zerk will be the first one to get afflicted? That actually tracks for like a warrior class. Yeah, it's simple enough. I knew it. Ooh, we just lost our front runner. Hope this creature has low special defense. This is them using up all their mana. She was sleepy to begin with. This could turn out to be a solo mission real quick. Interesting to see who's next. Like, Free Run does not have the passive ability. But she's Free Run. Oh, and there she goes. She's gone. Right, like, how, much, how good are your offensive capabilities, my dude? She's gone. It's over. But Freeman could. Sign might be meeting his friend sooner than anticipated. Oh, is that all? I thought it was going to be something dangerous. Maybe he has holy. White mages have holy, right? Throw your book at. Oh, okay. <laughs> well, that's pretty cool. Sort of holy esque. As expected, it has high special defense. And you only have five seconds to explain. Oh, is this one of those battles that doesn't allow escaping? Okay. 
Throwing free words. Good name under the bus. <laughs> uh, five seconds is narrow, but it can deflect. Uh, it's one second. Core can deflect. How did she, wait? How did she know that? Wow, that was fast. Curse instantly broken. Mm, you got some explaining to do. They did that on purpose. And that's where Sane's journey ended. <laughs> he just stayed in the village. Right. Right. Yeah, I guess he's trusted her experience and ability. That's pretty bold. Try to solo it. Freeman's joking, playing. Oh, and another head pad. Wow. It's the currency of the group. Oh, he'll be talking about that forever until he meets the next woman. I like how that whole episode was half of the episode. Monster quest handled. Moving on. I hope every segment from now on ends with a head pat. Oh boy. This guy's very elegant. Oh. Oh god, this is my life story. <laughs> I want attention from Vern, but I get attention from the noble. Stark, we need the money. <laughs> Come on, Stark. We're broke. Take one for the team. Stark. Wow. Brace yourself. No idea what that means. They're pennies, maybe. Oh, what? We're related. You see a resemblance. Oh, okay. Maybe he's dead and they need like a placeholder. Before the kingdom or for politics or for something. Body double. Wow. Stark in a high class noble situation acting as royalty. What could go wrong? I like how it's pay us. What is that in American money? Okay. Freeware continuously getting paid in books. Yeah, it's the Stark learning etiquette arc. <laughs> so I'm enjoying. <laughs> it's not fair. Oh man, my poor boy Stark doing work. While everyone else just enjoys their life. Whoa, whoa, whoa. No one said there was going to be reading. My lady. She says that, but who knows? Yeah, now I know. Now we know. <laughs><笑> I mean, maybe the relationship was just like this. Maybe she's like, oh, it's just a relationship。だがこれも息子の意思だ。付き合いすぎるぜ、あんた。I I think he's just like this. I think he's just stern. Oh, this also... Yeah, I was about to say exactly this. It's just a cultural thing in their family, I guess. Weird. Stark is his fake or surrogate son, and this guy also Stark's surrogate father in a figurative sense. This might end up being more emotionally useful than they initially, and I initially thought. Stark also, in a sense, being his brother. 
Who knows, right? Like, Stark's father was really harsh, we've seen that. But we... He didn't get a chance to really grow up and have it, have an adult perspective on it. It's highly possible his father was a total jerk. Who the hell knows? It's also very possible that his father really loved Stark and was just doing what he thought was best for him. And that would have come out naturally in adulthood. But because of his father's early death, he only has his childhood experiences to draw on for evaluation. And kid's perspective is... I don't want to say it's unreliable. That's not the whole thing. It's like extra enhanced and potent and it lacks some nuance. Actually, I think the way to cope with that situation in absence of the, the direct relationship to work through is kind of this stand-in type thing. It's like other experiences with other people help you recognize patterns which you can then, using your more fully formed conception of the world, go back and apply and challenge previous understandings and memories from childhood, which is exactly what this might be. A common thing that I've heard and also experienced to a somewhat limited degree having a younger sibling is that having kids really helps you appreciate your parents. There's also something similar in romantic relationships, like sometimes there's something you could never understand until one day in a different relationship, you find yourself on the other side and you're like, okay, I kind of get it and can sympathize. The key point here though, I think is that like, it goes really wrong when your childhood conception of things never gets updated. It has to be re-examined. <laughs> That's just double fisting. Donuts. Freerin etiquette. Take Freerin! Yeah, I don't see Freerin consenting to etiquette class. <laughs> I like it. They just had time to insert a snapshot of Sane. Scoping out the ladies. Simon would probably take the etiquette class just so we could attend the soiree. Seっかく練習したんだしさ。踊ろうぜ。this, this mission is paying dividends. You get to just keep this. Yeah, I'll, yeah, I'll, I'll sign up for that etiquette class. This is kind of cliche, but I, I get it. You know, there's like thing of you fall in love when you dance with someone. I've had that experience. You see people differently. It just checks a different box and it like blows open your understanding of who they are. I don't know. That's probably the point. And like his not being so into it, him wearing the mask of it, in a way plays into the coolness of it. <laughs> He's just happy to dance with Fern. <laughs> My boy Sark is a lover and a fighter. <laughs> Oh, the dip. It's over. It's over. Oh, they got to go to the sorry without any etiquette. Right, this is what he's struggling with. This is what he's dealing with. Sark is on loan. Daddy! Whoa, that's very astute. Yeah, he's harsh. Father, hard to understand his kid or youth. Like I was saying before, that kind of thing, experience and the perspective that comes with experience has a way of softening those wounds a lot. But critically, like I said, they have to be revisited to a certain extent. Their narratives formed in childhood have to be challenged if they're not beneficial. This is also a long running thing on the channel, going back to Avatar, maybe even Midnight Gospel. But like 90% of that is realizing your, your parents are humans. And speaking of identifying things in others through identifying things in yourself, one really fast gateway there is reflecting on your own imperfections and then realizing that that is just a, a universal human thing and there's some sympathy to be had there and caveat like there are some truly terrible things that are perhaps unforgivable i don't even think the forgiveness part of it is necessary but i think the understanding is really important understanding it has a way of reducing the threat of it so that it can be looked at in a, in a more stable place <laughs> Alright, there's Aizen in this too. <laughs> I was like, how do you know, but we're dead on. Alright, that's good.
So this is a, this is really big of Stark. He handled this really well. Like he cut right to it, it feels, and got a lot out of it. Oh, she picked her grimoire. I wonder what it was. I wonder if that'll come back. That seems significant. Or it was about how to turn flowers into cheese or something. These two episodes were great. How to do two seasons in one season, the free run story. One thing I hadn't considered until just now when they flashed to it was the connection thematically between Stark's biological father and Aizen. Aizen seemed like he's a really kind dude and a nice teacher, but like the way it ended has to have hit extra hard for Stark considering what he went through as a kid with his actual father. But to my great relief, he's way more mature about it than I might have guessed. Another thing that's only tangentially related to this episode, but it's something I've thought about a few times in the show, it's an idea I first encountered in the movie Big Fish, which I really love, where the main character in his journey finds the perfect town, like everything is great, but he leaves and it's sort of like, why would you leave this? But I intuitively understand why you would leave it because you have a calling and you, you would probably be really happy staying in this wonderful place but there's a part of you that's like screaming at you to keep moving, to keep going. That in some ways the pleasure of a thing while being a gift is also potentially a curse. It's like an escape. I say that because of my joke about how like, this is where science journey ended and then less of a joke. There's an alternate reality where Stark just stays here and is royalty, but no, you know, we have to fight the demon king.